Hello and welcome back Discovery Learners to another episode of Ability to Learn from the Discovery Day program. It is I, Teacher Liz here, your host once more on today, Thursday. On this episode, we're going to go over some observances, interesting history, I'll be showing you some cool landmarks, animals, pretty plants, and of course some interesting facts. So let's not delay any further, let's start the show. And now for our daily observances. Hey Discovery Learners, it's Substitute Teacher Andrew bringing you some fun new observances for today. Our first observance is National Egg Day. June 3rd is a time to crack an egg and observe National Egg Day. The nutrient-rich food has gone back and forth with science and nutritionists over the decades as just to how many ways there are to eat an egg and if it's part of a healthy diet. However, one egg provides an excellent source of protein and vitamin D. As only 75 calories and 5 grams of fat, it's an easy choice to satisfy hunger too. Eggs are easily seasoned and pair well with vegetables to increase the nutritional value of a meal. Eggs are an essential ingredient to baked goods and are a part of our everyday diets. There's so much to celebrate in these small packages. I bet you're wondering how to celebrate and observe National Egg Day. Well, that's easy. Have your favorite egg breakfast, or maybe try something new, like quiche or egg sous vide. Let us know in the comment section below what your favorite egg dish is. Our next observance is another tasty one, National Chocolate Macaroon Day. Each year, National Chocolate Macaroon Day celebrates this tasty treat. The main ingredient is always shredded coconut usually sweetened and sometimes toasted. Other ingredients include flour, sugar, or sweetened condensed milk, and egg whites and flavoring. Once the ingredients are combined, the mixture is dropped by spoonfuls into baking sheets and baked. Chocolate is added either to the batter or the baked cookie is dipped in melted chocolate. While these cookies are quite beautiful, people either love or hate coconut. For me, I love coconut, texture and the flavor, but I understand why it's not for everyone. These sturdy cookies go well with coffee and tea, or dipped in milk. Serve them with a biscotti or shortbread or lemon cookies to add variety. There's no wrong way to eat a macaroon, especially a chocolate macaroon. And how can you observe National Macaroon Day? Well, that's easy. Try to find a restaurant or a local bakery that has macaroons and try one of these delicious treats. Let us know in the comment section below if you've ever had a chocolate macaroon. Our last observance is National Repeat Day. National Repeat Day. You see what I did there? And National Repeat Day is just a day to have fun and repeat yourself. It's not very complicated, but it's a lot of fun. Like you have an opportunity to say thank you twice instead of once each time. Or you watch your favorite movie. That's kind of like repeating it since you've seen it twice. Let us know in the comment section below what you want to do for National Repeat Day. Go ahead and comment down below and let us know how you plan on observing, well, these observances for today. On this day in history. Today, in 1976, Queens, Bohemian Rhapsody goes gold. Bohemian Rhapsody is a song by the British rock band Queen. It was written by Freddie Mercury for the band's 1975 album, A Night at the Opera. The song was a six-minute suit, notable for its lack of refraining chorus and consisting of several sections, an intro, a ballad segment, and an operaic passage, a hard rock part, and a reflective coda. Bohemian Rhapsody is one of the few songs to emerge from the 1970s progressive rock movement to achieve widespread commercial success and appealed to a mainstream audience. Bohemian Rhapsody topped the UK singles charts for nine weeks and had sold more than a million copies by the end of January 1976. In 1991, after Mercury's death, it topped the charts for another five weeks, eventually becoming UK's third best-selling single of all time. It is also the only song to reach the UK Christmas number one twice by the same artist. It also topped the charts in countries including Canada, Australia, New Zealand, Ireland, and the Netherlands, and sold over 6 million copies worldwide. In the United States, 
the song peaked at number 9 in 1976, but reached a new peak of number 2 on the Billboard Hot 100 after being used in the film Wayne's World in 1992. In 2018, the release of Queen's biopic, Bohemian Rhapsody, brought the song renewed popularity and the chart success worldwide. In 2004, Bohemian Rhapsody was inducted to the Grammy Hall of Fame, and in 2018, it became the most streamed song of the 20th century, and it had been downloaded or streamed over 1.6 billion times. Today, in 1988, the film Big, which was directed by Penny Marshall, starring Tom Hanks, premieres in the USA. Big is a 1988 American fantasy comedy drama film directed by Penny Marshall, and it stars Tom Hanks as adult Josh Baskin, a young boy who makes a wish to be big, and then aged to adulthood overnight. The film also stars Elizabeth Perkins, David Moscow as Young Josh, John Hurd, and Robert Lagia. It was written by Gary Gross and Anne Spielberg. It was produced by Gracie Films and distributed by 20th Century Fox. Upon release, Big was met with wide critical acclaim, particularly for Hank's performance. It was a huge commercial success as well, grossing $151 million worldwide against production budget of only $18 million, and it proved pivotal to Hank's career, establishing him as a major box office draw, as well as a critical favorite. The film received Academy Award nominations for Best Actor for Tom Hanks and Best Original Screenplay. Wow, I like this movie. Have you seen it? What do you think about it? Go ahead and leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Go ahead and leave a comment below and let us know what you think of today's historical events. Notable figures born on this day. Our first notable figure born today is Josephine Baker, born June 3rd, 1906 in St. Louis, Missouri. This American dancer and entertainer also known as the Black Pearl and the Creole Goddess, is widely recognized by her dancing with banana costume. She was also an activist in the civil rights movement. Before she was famous, she was raised mostly by her mother, Carrie McDonald. With her starring role in the 1934 film Zuzu, she became the first African-American woman to star in a major film. She unfortunately passed away April 12th of 1975 at the age of 68. But an interesting piece of trivia to know about her is that she adopted 12 children, a rainbow tribe, which is a group of orphans from different races. Wow! Happy birthday, Josephine Baker! Our next notable figure born today is our first lady, Jill Biden. Born June 3rd, 1951, in Hamilton, New Jersey. This American Delaware educator and the wife of Joe Biden, the 46th President of the United States. Apart from being the First Lady, she worked as a professor of English in Northern Virginia Community College. She also done important work advocating for the rights of military families. Before she was famous, she was a waitress at the Jersey Shore before enrolling in a junior college in Pennsylvania to study fashion merchandising. She married President Joe Biden in 1977, and the couple have a daughter together. She turns 70 years old today. Happy birthday, First Lady Joe Biden. Another notable figure born today is... Anderson Cooper, born June 3rd, 1976, in New York City, New York. This American TV investigative reporter is the son of Gloria Vanderbilt. He became famous as the host of Anderson Cooper 360 on CNN. Before he was famous, before becoming involved in media, he worked as an intern for the Central Intelligence Agency, otherwise known as the CIA. And at the age of 10 to 13, he modeled for Ralph Lauren. He turns 54 years old today. Happy birthday, Anderson Cooper. 
And our last notable figure born today is Zane Emery. Born June 3rd, 1998 in McMinnonville, Oregon. This American television actor is known for series regular roles on television pilots for Shema Greggy, Saves the World, and American Education, and This Little Piggy. He has also appeared on Disney Channel shows such as I'm in the Band, Ant Farm, Kickin' It, and Shake It Up. Before he was famous, he began performing at the age of nine in a musical production called Scrooge. That same year, he was named the 2008 Oregon State Vocal Champion. And he also had reoccurring and guest starring roles on notable television shows such as Desperate Housewives, The Closer, Criminal Minds, CSI Miami, and Modern Family. He turns 23 years old today. Happy birthday, Zane Emery. Happy birthday, everyone. Come along, Discovery Learners, and we will see the landmarks of the world. As we continue our journey of discovery throughout Thailand, here are some landmarks you should see. Starting with Wat Phar Q, found within the same complex of the Grand Palace, and Wat Phar Q, also known as the Temple of the Emerald Buddha, are major tourist destinations in the Thai capital. Few people visit Bangkok without visiting this famous landmark. The intricate detail and the grand architecture appeal photography lovers and those interested in history and culture. The celebrated Emerald Buddha is one of the nation's most revered religious statues. Wow, pretty cool! And we'll learn a little more about the Emerald Buddha later on in this episode. Up next is Wat Aran. Located in the Thonburi side of the river, Wat Aran is one of Bangkok's most unique temples, also known as the Temple of the Dawn. The riverside temple has a colorful padogas and spires that towers over the water. You can climb up these ornate structures for great views over the surroundings and appreciate the fine details close up. Mythical Garuda figures surround many of the pagodas. Wow, pretty neat. And this is also another very picturesque place. Let's move on. Our next landmark is another temple. It's Wat Parathat Doi Suthep, one of Chiang Mai's major temples. Wat Parathat Doi Suthep has a glittering golden padoga. Surrounded by beautiful pavilions and buildings, the Padoka houses a relic of the Lord Buddha. Visitors must climb more than 300 steps to reach the hilltop temple, with colorful Naga statues slithering down the staircase and the great views across the nearby area. The outer terrace boasts small shrines, trees, flowers, and statues, while the inner terrace is where you'll find the main tiered padoga as well as buddha statues in various poses wow this place is incredible and everything is covered in gold pretty interesting our next stop is another temple the wat rong kun although wat rong kun is a fairly new temple it is quickly establishing itself as one of thailand's must-sees found in chiang rai it's also known as the White Temple. It is striking for its gleaming white designs and fairy tale like appearance. There is controversial artwork within the main temple building, reached by traversing a walkway with ghostly limbs reaching out from underneath. Whoa, spooky! And this building and everything around it is completely white. Very interesting. Definitely a place I would visit if I ever went to Thailand. Here we have the State Tower, one of the tallest buildings in Bangkok. The State Tower sprang into public awareness thanks to the 2011 hit movie, The Hangover Part 2. Parts of the film were shot at the Sky Bar at the top of the tower, which is part of a high-class Labanya Hotel. 
The bar's golden dome and circular bar area on a large open terrace are now among the city's most recognizable sights. Having a drink at the world's highest open air sky bar is often on many visitors' wish lists. Well, that looks like a very cool place to go to. And I didn't know it was featured in the movie. Pretty cool. Next is Kotapu. Now, you may not know the name of Kotapu, but you will almost certainly recognize pictures of this iconic natural landmark. Located in the sublime and scenic Feng Nag Bay, the spire like curse rises up from shimmering waters with other greenery clad limestone rocks in the background. Located just off the coast of a small island of Kaoping Khan, together they are commonly referred to as James Bond Island, since it was featured in The Man with the Golden Gun. Whoa, it's a really cool looking place. And the rock and stone formations kind of look like they're floating or standing on their tips, huh? Pretty interesting place. And finally, we have the Damnoan Saduak Floating Market. The Damnoan Saduak Floating Market is one of the most famous such markets in Thailand, located just outside of Bangkok in the Rakshaburi province. It draws scores of tourists eager to experience a different way of shopping and see how trade is traditionally conducted in the land of smiles. If you go early in the morning, you'll see boats rowing in the market area from nearby waterways, laden with fruits and vegetables, cooking equipment, clothes, souvenirs, and much more. Wow, this is really cool. Matching shopping while on a boat? That seems so cool. Now, Thailand is a very interesting country with lots to see, but unfortunately we do not have time to see it all. But what we did get to see was pretty cool. Now be sure you stay tuned for tomorrow's episode as we finish teaching you a little bit more about Thailand here on Ability to Learn. Here's the animal of the day. Today's animal is the Siamese cat. Siamese is a type of oriental cat that originates from Thailand once known as Siam. This is an old breed. Some of the oldest written traces date back all the way to the 14th century, but it hasn't been introduced to Europe and the USA until the 19th century. Siamese cats are one of the most popular cats in the world. It's kept both as a companion and a show cat today. All modern Siamese cats are divided into two groups, the traditional and the show Siamese, based on the morphology and their purpose. Thanks to unusual coloration of their fur and elegant body, it can be easily recognized by people who aren't even familiar with cat breeds. Siamese are medium-sized cats that can reach 8 to 15 pounds. Unless you're like the chubby cat Tigger I grew up with, Siamese are covered with short, silky-like fur. Its body is cream-colored with dark-colored points. They can be brown, gray, red, lilac, blue, or caramel. Their nose, ears, tail, and paws are those colors. My kitty Tigger was a blue point Siamese. The Siamese can be a good choice for people who are allergic to cats because of their short fur. The Siamese have round, triangular, wedge-shaped faces, prominent almond-shaped blue eyes, a long nose, large pointed ears, and a slender body. Siamese was a highly appreciated and respected among the members of the royal families in Thailand. In the past, through the widespread belief that the soul of deceased family members enter the body of Siamese cats after death. The Thai name for Siamese means moon diamond. That's really interesting and sounds very pretty. Siamese cats have roamed throughout the White House during the presidencies of Rutherford Hayes, Gerald Ford, and Jimmy Carter. Siamese cats are smart, playful, loyal, calm and gentle, but it demands plenty of time and attention. It's not suitable for people who are rarely at home. The Siamese is a social cat that likes to spend time with both people, including children, and other cats. It can build very strong bonds with its owner. Siamese are very intelligent, and they are able to learn how to play fetch, or walk on a leash, or perform simple tricks. It likes to play with puzzle toys and other brain games. The Siamese is a very vocal cat too. It talks with its owners via baby-like meowing sounds. The Siamese don't shed very often and only require weekly brushings. The Siamese cat gives birth to six kittens on average. 
Kittens are whitish in color at birth. At the age of four weeks, their fur starts to darken and their points start to show. That's because of the mutation that gives them their color. The colder parts of the body tend to darken. Siamese have very long lifespans and usually live from the age of 15 to 20. My Tigger lived to be 20 years old. That's a long time. They are the best companions. So what do you think of today's animal? Is it cute? Is it creepy? Go ahead and let us know what you think in the comment section below. The plant of the day. Today's plant is catnip, also known as cat mint. It's a herbaceous plant that belongs to the mint family. It originates from Europe, Africa, and Asia, but can be found all over the world today. Catnip grows on fertile, porous soil and in areas that provide plenty of sun. It can often be found near the roads or railroads, in fields, pastures, near the streams. Despite proven medical value of this plant, catnip is mostly cultivated for ornamental purposes today and maybe for some cat scratchers here or there. Catnip has square-shaped branches, hairy stems that can reach 20 to 39 inches in height. Catnip has soft, hairy, triangular, ovate leaves with serrated edges and pointed tips. The leaves are oppositely arranged on the stem. They are pale green on the upper surface and whitish on the bottom due to the short white hairs. Catnip produces small, fragrant, lip-shaped, white, pale lavender flowers with purple dots. Arranged in dense, whorled clusters on the tips of the branches, catnip blooms from spring to autumn and attracts butterflies which are responsible for the pollination of this plant. The fruit of the catnip pod is filled with four oval reddish-brown seeds. Catnip propagates via seed and underground rhizomes. Aromatic minty leaves of catnip are used as a spice for cooking. Tea made of catnip leaves produce a sedative-like effect in humans, and it can be used in the treatment of insomnia, nausea, and toothaches. The crushed leaves can be applied topically as a first aid for cuts and superficial injuries. Catnip is also available in the form of capsules today. This herbal remedy is mostly used to relieve headaches and digestion problems. Catnip is a rich source of a substance known as nepotalactone, which triggers a strong euphoric reaction in cats, manifested by rolling, twisting, rubbing, bathing in the plant. The sniffing of catnip has a stimulating effect, while consumption of catnip produces short-term sedative effects in cats. Only 50 to 75% of cats have strong reactions to catnip. They usually last about 10 to 15 minutes. Catnip doesn't have a harmful effect and doesn't create an addiction in cats. The plant is available in the form of pellets, loose leaves, sprays, scratching pads, and various toys today, and it's often used as a training tool. Even large cats, such as lions, leopards, and tigers, react to catnip. The same chemical that causes the euphoric feeling in catnip is also a strong natural repellent for flies, mosquitoes, termites, cockroaches, aphids, and squash bugs. Catnip is a perennial plant that has a lifespan of more than two years. It's that time again. We just learned about a new plant. So go ahead and tell us what you think in the comment section below. And now for the word of the day. Today's word is dander. It's a noun. It means skin flakes in an animal's fur or hair. As a verb, it means a stroll, dander. Our next word is a word you may have heard somewhere in today's episode. The word is rhapsody. It is spelled R-H-A-P-S-O-D-Y. It's a noun. It means an effusively enthusiastic or ecstatic expression of feeling, an epic poem or part of it, of a suitable land for recitation at one time. Rhapsody. Let's take a look at the art of the day. Today's art is the Emerald Buddha. The Emerald Buddha is the image of meditating Gautama Buddha, seated in the lotus position. It's made of semi-precious green stone, which is jasper rather than emerald or jade, and clothed in gold. 
It stands about 66 centimeters or 26 inches tall. The image is considered the sacred paladin of Thailand. It is housed in the Temple of the Emerald Buddha, Wat Park Yu, on the grounds of the Grand Palace in Bangkok. It was created in the year 1434 and the artist is unknown. Although the statue is made of jasper, the emerald in its name refers to its color. Wow, what an amazing statue! And it decorated in gold makes it really pretty. Now this is a one-of-a-kind sculpture, making it an excellent work of art. What do you think of the statue? Go ahead and leave your thoughts and comments down below. Here is today's interesting fact. Did you know that a shark doesn't contain any bones in its body? It's true. Sharks have no bones. Sharks use their gills to filter oxygen from the water. There are special type of fish known as elastobranch, which means fish made of cartilaginous tissues. The clear, grisly stuff that your ears and nose are made out of. This category also includes rays, sawfish, and skates. Their cartilaginous skeletons are much lighter than true bone and their large livers are full of low density oils, both helping them to stay buoyant. Even though sharks don't have bones, they can still fossilize. As most sharks age, they deposit calcium salts into their skeletal cartilages to strengthen it. The dry jaws of sharks appear to be heavy and solid, much like bone. These same materials allow the shark skeletal systems to fossilize quite nicely. The teeth have enamel, so they show up as fossil records too. So yeah, sharks don't have any bones. They have cartilage. Pretty interesting, huh? Yes, cue the credits. This means we have reached the end of today's episode of Ability to Learn. I had fun, and I hope you had fun too. But not only had fun, I hope you learned something as well. So farewell, Discovery Learners. Teacher Liz here is saying thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Don't forget to attend the live Zoom sessions provided to you every day by the Discovery Day Program's educational team. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you're notified for all the fun here on Ability to Learn from the Discovery Day Program.